watched by more people than any other network. ABC. Making a difference for Indiana. This is WRTV 6 News at 11 with Clyde Lee, Dion Willis, weather with meteorologist Bob McClain, and Ed Sorensen on sports. I don't think I ever get that again. Yeah, yeah. Any more. A moment, a mother savors a very delicious moment with her son. He was one of nearly 20 hostages held at a northeast side Denny's for six hours. Good evening, everyone. Police say that these are the men responsible for holding more than two dozen people hostage, shooting one hostage dead, injuring five others. Other hostages say the two men were, as they put it, pleasant. Their word. They even asked the hostages if they wanted something to drink. Well, this has been a long, harrowing day for the many hostages and their families. Tonight, it is over. The suspects are in jail. We have complete team coverage for you from a chronology of what happened today to the hostages who survived being reunited with their grateful families. It happened here at the Denny's restaurant on Pendleton Pike, just east of Shadeland Avenue. We begin with Garrett Thomas and how the whole incident unfolded from start to finish. Boy, guy coming out. A manager is shot. A marathon has begun. Lives are in the balance as two armed suspects are trapped inside the Denny's restaurant. Uh, I saw the manager Bob got shot. Yeah, that's it. Did the gunman say anything to him before he shot him? He said his name, that's it. Did it look like a robbery to you, or did you recognize this individual? Uh, no. Yeah, no. What kind of weapons did they have? A uh, ton machine gun. After I heard the gunshot, I walked out front to the, to the kitchen area and saw the other manager laying on the floor. At that time, he told me to go to the back of the house and call the police. Well, the guy firing guns, I don't have time to get on the phone and call the police because I'm feared for my own life. Many were in fear for their own lives. One lost his life. The SWAT team executed a rescue of this body placed in the yard, but it was too late. This victim was the only fatality. The hostages had simply gone for breakfast or gone to work, but this one man was simply gone. What worked in the other's favor was a SWAT team poised and perched outside. Hostage negotiators were unseen, but nearby, and their work began to pay off. Hostages began to trickle out, the young, the old, and the suspicious. This man was brought out in handcuffs because police say he matched the description of one of the suspects. He was not. But after six hours, it was over. Ron and Tom Matheson from Castle, Wyoming, came out with their hands up in textbook fashion. It was robbery gone bad. Only the suspects and the victims know how bad. In Indianapolis, Derek Thomas, 6 News. Meanwhile tonight, the CEO of Denny's has flown into Indianapolis. Early this evening he came. This is the first fatal hostage situation in Denny's history that he said. Jerry Richardson came because he says Denny feels very much a part of this situation. He's been visiting with hostage families tonight and wanted to be available to, to answer questions, both from families and from the community. I don't know so much what it does to Denny's reputation. I think it's just a heartache for the people that were involved in the tragedy today. I don't view it as a Denny's situation other than the fact that my heart goes out to the customers and the employees. And as part of the negotiations, Denny's agreed to pay for the wife and father of one of the suspects to fly tomorrow from Wyoming to Indianapolis. One of the suspects insisted that that was part of the deal. Tonight, the two suspects, who are brothers, are in Marion County Jail. They are, as you heard before, from Casper, Wyoming. They came to Indianapolis by chance. Denise Dillon has been working on this. More for us on the background of these men, and she joins us live now from the newsroom with more. Denise? Clyde, police said the men arrived from Indianapolis almost by chance. They apparently were involved in an unrelated case in Casper, Wyoming, and decided to leave town. So they looked at a map, picked out Indianapolis, and took a bus here. The suspects have been identified as 24-year-old Tom Matheson and his brother Ron, who's 27. The men do not have any violent offenses on their police record, but tonight they have some very serious charges against them. Murder, attempted murder, confinement, attempted robbery, and carrying a handgun without a license. As they were being led into the county lockup, they were asked if it was an accident. Now, police in Casper, Wyoming, say the Mathesons are suspected of embezzling $4,000 from an adult bookstore where they both work. Their former boss at that bookstore describes the men as extra polite, clean-cut, great guys. Believe it or not, 
After it was all over, a couple of the hostages at the Denny's restaurant described them in a similar way, saying they were very polite and offered to get drinks for people. And the waitress takes a little girl, a coloring book, and some friends, and it was sir and ma'am, the way they spoke to everybody. They just said that they didn't mean for anyone to be shot or killed or anything. What it was not their intent. I don't know what their intent was. I never had figured it out, and I never will, I guess. So then what went wrong? Police negotiators say one of the men approached the manager who was at the cash register. The manager saw that he had a gun, there was a struggle over it, and the manager was shot. At that point, police believe the Mathesons panicked and started firing shots inside the restaurant. And when it was over, as you know, four people were wounded, one man was killed. Denise, as we mentioned a minute ago, one of the suspect's wife is flying to Indianapolis. What do you know about that? Well, we do know that Denny's has agreed to pay for the ticket, and IPD is trying to set up the flight arrangements. We don't know exactly when she'll be flying in. We do know that she is flying in with her father, and it is Tom Matheson's wife. She is seven months pregnant. During the whole ordeal, witnesses say that Tom Matheson kept saying how sorry he was about the whole situation and that he really wanted to talk to his wife. Thanks Thank a lot. You, well, doctors say the quick thinking of a northeast side man saved the life of a five-year-old boy that was shot in the face at the very beginning of this Denny's incident. That's right. Little Justin Bassinger is in serious but stable condition tonight after a bullet struck him in the face. His mother's fiancé, who drove the little boy to the hospital, was also shot in the back. And 23-year-old Steve Johnson was treated and released, but Justin, he's going to be hospitalized for some time. After six hours of surgery, doctors are optimistic about Justin Basinger's recovery from a gunshot wound to the face, although they admit healing will be slow. He did very well. He's uh, lost a lot of his uh, baby teeth, but most of his permanent teeth appear to be uh, intact. Um, and so that's, you know, a blessing in all this. He should be able to be... Um, uh, reconstructed in good shape um, but when and how many times that will happen we'll just have to wait and see justin was in the restaurant with his sister holly his mother amy and her fiance 23 year old steve johnson when the shots rang out at denny's police say the same bullet injured both justin and johnson first grazing johnson's back and then severely injuring little justin in the face he looked at the child and looked at the gunman and stated the gunman that he has to get the boy to the hospital and the gunman told him to get out or he's got the chance to do it. So they let him go. They let him go. They were the first hostages released and although injured himself, Johnson drove Justin to Community Hospital North. Doctors are transferring Justin to the pediatric intensive care unit at Methodist Hospital tonight where he is expected to stay for the next several weeks. Also recovering from surgery there are 76-year-old Cecil Williams, who suffered a gunshot wound to the hand and recovering from wounds to the buttocks and the abdomen is 49-year-old Robert Doan. Both are in satisfactory condition. In Indianapolis, Stacia Matthews, 6 News. Police have also identified the one man who was killed in the shootings as 71-year-old Alfred Smith. He is of Indianapolis. He had been shot in the face and in the upper body. Now, one police officer with a telephone turned out to be IPD's most powerful weapon against the two heavily armed gunmen. Sergeant Frank Evans spent five hours on the telephone with the two suspects inside the restaurant. Evans, a veteran officer, experienced hostage negotiator, helped bring the standoff to a peaceful conclusion. Of course, you're always nervous. You worry about it, you know. But um, the longer we talk, the more the calmer they got, and things went pretty good. So then after they did it, then they were filled with remorse, and, you know, they really felt bad about having hostages, they said. And so they just started letting them out. And the longer we talked, the more they decided to let them go. And you couldn't ask for a better ending. It went good. And for the hostages, there is that fear, that crippling fear of not knowing if they were going to live or die. They had to endure that for almost six hours, and then comes the release that comes with freedom. Channel 6's Jim Parsons chronicles their story tonight. As the hostages were released, there was applause from strangers and rejoicing by loved ones. Oh, Jesus, this could have been any of them. Anybody. I'm not ashamed. I remember when I was, but I'm not now. Thank you! Hallelujah! Yes, God is real! But most of all, the
there was a lot of hugging. Oh, I hug you. I love you, baby. I love you, too. <laughs> All right. It's okay. Why don't we head inside, okay, as soon as possible? This might be the best thing to do. God, I've never been so worried ever before in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Where's she going? God. There were a lot of similar reunions here, like the Stiers family. They came to Indianapolis from South Bend a few weeks ago to sell souvenirs at the Speedway. And while this hostage drama unfolded, their son drove here from South Bend, not knowing if his parents were alive or dead. To uh, take a moment to uh, pray to the good Lord that they're safe and uh, also just remember the good times that you've had and the many good times that are ahead of you. That's all you can, all you can do. His mother, who spent six hours as a hostage, had the same thought. I just prayed and prayed. I just prayed to the Lord that we all would get out. That's all you can do. Just have your confidence in the Lord, and we did. But Stephen Sires doesn't just thank God. He thanks the Denny's waitresses for how they handled the gunmen. And the waitresses, they deserve national honors. They kept them guys calm. They got them laughing. But neither waitress was willing to take much credit tonight. And as for the term hero... No, not exactly. On the Northeast Side, Jim Parsons, 6 News. The hostages say immediately following the shootings, the gunman forced all the patrons and employees to lie face down on the floor, but they say after a short time, the gunman allowed them to sit down at tables and even began serving lemonade. It's good that it's over with. Just ahead, a hostage situation, not the only problem that has been involving Denny's restaurant chain. Coming up, details on another national story that Denny's is trying to put behind them. Also, the other big story tonight, America says goodbye to a former first lady who is so many things to so many people. I'm meteorologist Bob McLean. The chances for rain over the next few days and the weather over this very important weekend. The answers to both coming up. And the Pacers getting ready to rumble with the Knicks, said with that, plus news that an NBA team is packing up and moving. All later in sports. Don't go away. Closed captioning sponsored by the F.C. Tucker Company. For 75 years, Tucker has matched more people with the right homes and more homes with the right people. Talk to Tucker today. Your Indiana Ford dealers, the one to see during performance days. Step on the pedal of a probe GT, powered by a 24-valve V6. Check out the Thunderbird Super Coupe, a supercharged bird with power to spare. Mustang GT, all new, all bad. When this 5-liter V8 rumbles, you know you're running with the big dogs. That's why Mustang Cobra is the official pace car of the Indianapolis 500. Your Indiana Ford dealers, the one to see during performance days. Meyer is celebrating 60 years of savings. And because you put us where we are today, we want you to celebrate with us. This week, we're celebrating our 60 best buys with Eckridge Meter Cheese Franks, just 88 cents. And Michelina's Mac and Cheese and Shells and Cheese are two for a dollar. It's the Meyer way of saying thank you. Come celebrate 60 years of savings at Meyer. The secret is out. Something special is happening right nearby. Join in the fun on race weekend. Get in for only $5 on Saturday, Sunday, or Monday with any proof of purchase from JTM Food Products. Bring a picnic or enjoy the special prices on grilled JTM hamburgers and sausages. On Monday, enjoy the country sounds of RCA recording artist Andy Child. Man and wife and family. Old Indiana, the greatest spectacle in Fun Park. <laughs> If a new Mercedes-Benz S-Class is something you'd like to drive, no one can help you more than your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer. The Justice Department has reached a civil rights settlement with Denny's restaurants. The food chain hit with dozens of allegations of bias against blacks. Details of the settlement were not released. But Flagstar Companies Incorporated, the parent company, reportedly will settle by paying $45 million 
and hiring an outside monitor to check on its civil rights policy. Dion? In Washington, D.C. today, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis rests near the eternal flame she lit some 30 years ago. The widow of President John F. Kennedy was buried today by his side at Arlington National Cemetery. ABC's Lisa Stark has details. In a simple and brief ceremony on a bright May day, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis was laid to rest alongside the grave of President Kennedy and the eternal flame she lit 31 years ago. She was memorialized by a man who drew his own political inspiration from John Kennedy. God gave her very great gift and imposed upon her great burden. She bore them all with dignity and grace and uncommon common sense. May the flame she lit so long ago burn ever brighter here and always brighter in our hearts. The closed ceremony was in keeping with the privacy that Kennedy Onassis sought after leaving the White House. Her children, Caroline Kennedy Schlossberg and John Kennedy Jr., knelt to kiss the casket, reminiscent of that November day in 1963 when Jackie Kennedy did the same at the funeral for their assassinated father, her husband. Mrs. Kennedy Onassis died Thursday night of cancer. Her body was taken this morning from her Fifth Avenue apartment to the nearby church where she was christened 64 years ago. In a service close to camera, Senator Edward Kennedy eulogized his sister-in-law as a woman who was widowed too young and died too young. She made a rare and noble contribution to the American spirit, but for us, most of all, she was a magnificent wife, a mother, a grandmother, a sister, aunt, and friend. Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis wanted President Kennedy buried here because she said he belonged to the nation. Now she does, too. Lisa Stark, ABC News, Arlington National Cemetery. Dan Young is regional headquarters for trucks and vans in central Indiana. And he's clearing out all his new and used inventory at tremendous savings to you. 11 acres of trucks and vans to choose from and a hassle-free buying experience at the lowest prices anywhere. Yes, prices are lower, trades are higher, and financing is easier at Dan Young. Your regional headquarters for trucks and vans conveniently located just north of I-465 at 96th and Keystone. Go and save your money like Big Dan Young. That's the Greek city. It's really very strong. When George Ellis prepares for a date, he always takes his Ameritech complete card. Like this? Very He uses it as a no-fee credit card to look his best. That's you. Very strong. Which gives him the confidence to use the calling card feature to ask for a date. Bonnie. Hey, it's George. Well, at least he gets 10% cash back on the call. The Ameritech complete card and calling card. You could run San Francisco for a year on 5 billion kilowatt hours of electricity. But could you generate it with less risk of acid rain or global warming? We can, using a fuel we'll never run out of. In fact, we may have picked up some from you today. The fuel that fires our trash to energy plants, otherwise known as garbage. What business do we have saying we help the environment? That is our business. Flexible seating, the safety of standard anti-lock brakes and airbags. Two, count them, two built-in child seats and a great new look. New Pontiac Transport, it's got it all. Mm -hmm. A special message to Howard Caldwell from Ari Leyendike. Howard, baby, I only have to work with Ed one month a year, and I know how tough that can be. So you are to be congratulated. Be a part of the celebration on WRTV Sticks. <laughs> another, another eclipse is on its way. Yes. Yeah, but this one we don't have to worry about safely viewing because this mm -hmm. one will be an eclipse, a partial eclipse of the moon, and it will be tomorrow night when about the southern quarter of the moon dips in the darkest part of the Earth's shadow. Uh, the best time to view it will be just about splitting the difference there, about 10.30 when about one quarter southern limb of the moon dips into the darkest part of the Earth's shadow. Now we'll have to hope that the partial eclipse 
of the moon is not totally eclipsed by the clouds because right now it looks like there is kind of an unsettled weather pattern beginning to set itself up. We do have some mid and high level clouds right now where it's 73 degrees here in Indianapolis. Humidity is 57%. Wind light out of the southwest at 5 miles an hour and the barometer is steady. Today's high, 90. The warmest temperature we've had, obviously, in 1994 and the warmest temperature since uh, August the 30th of last year. And the low this morning was 62 degrees. No rain recorded since midnight. A stormy afternoon up in the upper Mississippi River Valley and the northern plains. 60 mile an hour wind gusts from Rapid City, South Dakota, near Fargo, North Dakota. Also from around the Waterloo, Iowa area with wind damage reports from around the Bemidji, Minnesota area and Prairie du Chien right on the Mississippi of southwestern Wisconsin. There's the big picture now and so far as the radar images you can see those thunderstorms blowing up over portions of eastern North Dakota and Minnesota. Also this area that comes across and drops about an inch and four tenths of rain at Rochester, Minnesota then curves to the southeast but now is weakening with other big thunderstorms located in the northwestern portion of Oklahoma. Locally, our radar is showing some thunder shower activity from portions of uh, Huntington County on through Wells and Adams down to near Jay County and near Portland. All of this activity sliding east-southeast. We don't see any detectable activity within about a 50-mile radius of Indianapolis. The big picture across much of the country, low pressure in South Dakota is igniting these thunderstorms, and this front as it slides off to the southeast, will tomorrow afternoon fire up more thunderstorm activity over northern Illinois and northern Indiana. And it will show, for the most part, the possibility of thunder showers erupting again and moving south across Indiana by tomorrow afternoon and evening. So for tonight, it'll be warm. There will be a few showers, mainly in the northern and northeastern portions of the viewing area. Low temperatures, upper 50s to mid 60s. For tomorrow, varying amounts of cloudiness and sunshine, but there will be a risk of some thunderstorm activity developing by tomorrow afternoon into the evening. A few of them on a very scattered basis could be strong in nature. Highs, mid to upper 80s once again with that southwesterly wind feeding in the mild air. For Wednesday, quite a bit of cloudiness. It will be cooler. The threat of showers will be ending as the day goes on, and highs in the mid, possibly upper 70s. Our extended outlook, well, it indicates there may be a few more lingering showers on Thursday, then the threat will end. Friday and Saturday appear to be dry, and right now it looks like Sunday, race day, will be dry with temperatures in the 70s. Oh, so that's going to be perfect. Mm. Thank you, Bob. Pacers one day away from playing the Knicks. Let's go uh, live to Ed in New York City, who's waiting along with us. Hey, thank you, guys. Good evening, everybody. We're coming to you live tonight from outside Storage Madison Square Garden, where tomorrow night at 7 o'clock your time, the Pacers and Knicks tee it up for the opening game of the best of seven Eastern Conference Finals. We'll preview that matchup through the eyes of the Pacers' Burn Fleming and have the rest of the day in sports next live from the Big Apple. Stick with us. When we say Dodge Neon is around 12.5 nicely loaded, just what does nicely loaded mean? Well, how about things like an automatic, air, power steering, power locks, power remote mirrors, rear window defroster, standard driver and front passenger airbags, and much more. Dodge Neon. For around 12.5, you can do quite nicely. Say hello to Dodge Neon at your friendly Dodge dealer today. Get the information you need to make smart health care and wellness decisions. Watch the St. Vincent Health Line, Wednesdays at 6 a.m., noon, and 6 p.m. on WRTV 6. Hey, you! It's Clarence the Crusher. There's too much food in these Encore soft berry cakes. Tell them, Crusher. How can I eat all these juicy, charbroiled steaks in rich, beefy gravy? But Crusher Encore is a two-pound family-size entree. I don't have a family. I do. <laughs> and we love Encore. We'll be over at six tonight. Really? You will? Al, about this Encore of the Parmigiana. Five tomorrow? Oh. oh. For tasting more, it's Encore. 
This Wednesday, Howard Caldwell signs off after 35 years on Channel 6. Be a part of his retirement celebration this week on 6 News at 5 o'clock. American Family Insurance would like to remind you of all the reasons for choosing one insurance company over another. The most important reason by far is the service you'll receive when you really need it. Choose wisely. Look in the white or yellow pages for the American Family Agent nearest you. Some people say it costs too much to build an environmentally better building. The people of Lawrence, Kansas proved them wrong. This is our Walmart store here. Recycled asphalt parking lots, solar-powered signs, skylights for natural light to save electricity, and many other improvements you can't even see. We're proud of this store because we were a test, and much of what we learned will go into future stores. The test was a wonderful success, and the real winner is the world around us. Welcome back live, everybody, back there in central Indiana. We are live tonight out in front of one of the most famous arenas in the sporting world, Madison Square Garden. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock your time, the Pacers take on the New York Knicks in game one of the best of seven Eastern Conference finals. Tonight in this building, the New Jersey Devils beat the New York Rangers 4-1 to, to take a 3-2 lead in their Stanley Cup semifinal series. So right now the workmen are inside replacing the hockey rink with the hoop facility so they can play tomorrow night. The Pacers are ensconced at this hour hopefully snug in their beds at the very plush Plaza Hotel. We went over there a couple hours ago to try to track down some of the Pacers to do some interviews, get their thoughts heading into this big game, the biggest in franchise history. But the only guy we could catch up with was 10-year veteran point guard Vern Fleming. And here's that conversation. You got the Knicks. Uh, how you feel going into that first game tomorrow night? Um, I'm not Vern. I'm his brother. You're not Vern Fleming? No. Nope. I've been covering Vern Fleming for nine years. You're not, really? You're not Vern Fleming? Really, I'm not Vern Fleming. <laughs> you must be Victor. Yeah, I'm Victor. Are you guys like identical twins? Yeah, we are. Who's a better basketball player? I heard you're pretty good too. Me, I'm way better. <laughs> yeah, tell us about this series. You must be so proud of Vern. Oh yeah, I think they got a good chance. Uh, they've been playing well, and they've been playing well the last part of the season, so. I think they're all on high and they got a lot of confidence, so yeah. I think they do pretty well. Hearn has been through some hard times, as you well know, the last 10 years in Indianapolis. Is, is he starting to get the big head? I mean, has, is he acting different? Has he changed since all of a sudden they're on national TV all the time? They sweep the shack and all that? No, he's still the same. He's always the same low-key guy. He's going to play hard no matter what they're yeah, doing. Last sure. place or first place. Now, game one tonight in Houston in the best of seven Western Conference Championship Series. Akeem Olajuwon and the Rockets hosting Carl, the mailman Malone, and the Utah Jazz. Let's show you some highlights from this one. The Rockets had no problem at all in this game. Robert Ory, the follow slam. He had 11 rebounds and six points for the Rockets tonight. And then watch David Benoit of the Jazz here. The drive and the slam. He had 10, but at Houston, they had the lead at halftime. 54-34. Rockets in control. Vernon Maxwell with the three. He had 11. And then Kenny Smith, a huge game for Houston. Another three. He had 27. The Rockets, 10 of 24 from behind the arc tonight. And then Akeem Olajuwon, 31 points. He scores there and draws the foul. Carl Malone, 20 points and 16 rebounds in a losing effort. Houston wins it easily, 100 to 88. They lead the best of seven, one game to none. Game two will be Wednesday at the Summit in Houston. Now, some other NBA news today. The Minnesota Timberwolves, an expansion team five years ago, are moving to New Orleans. A group in New Orleans paid $152.5 million bucks for the rights to the Timberwolves. They will begin playing at the Crescent City next year. Now, let's take a look at Davy Jones, who on Saturday qualified the 40T car, the 40T car to get it into the field. But that ride will be taken over on race day. No real surprise by Scott Goodyear, his teammate on the Budweiser King team. Goodyear was bumped from the field yesterday by Marco Greco. He had a time of 220.7. As mentioned, Davy Jones qualified the 40T car at 223.8, stuck it in the middle of row 10 on Saturday. But he was brought in late to shake that car down. Scott Goodyear will get the ride. He will move to the back of the field on race day. Now we want to talk about some big league baseball. I need to tell you, Joe Carter, last year's World Series hero for Toronto, is off to an incredible start. Let's go to the Sky Dome for today's game between Cleveland and the Blue Jays. We'll pick it up with one out in the home half of the ninth inning, and Devo, Devon White, smacks the double. 
And then Joe Carter, who earlier in the game had a solo home run, his 14th on the year, will come up with a two-out single to score White and lead Toronto to a 6-5 win over the Tribe. He now has 54 runs batted in, does Carter in 43 games. He is on pace to bat in 202 runs this year. He is incredibly hot. On the board, Baltimore beats Milwaukee 5-3. Oakland leading Seattle over in the National League. Florida wins. Philadelphia flattens St. Louis. Colorado takes Cincinnati 8-3. The Cubs leading over L.A. in the seventh. And San Diego 4-0 over San Francisco. That is the final. The Indians lose both ends of a doubleheader tonight in Iowa. 4-1 and 3-2, but they're still 28-18. Ten games over 500 and well on top of New Orleans. Second place right now in the American Association. That'll do it live from in front of Madison Square Garden. We'll send it back to you guys in the studio. And don't forget, tomorrow night, if you can't be here, and I'm sure most of you can, Market Square Arena will be open at 6 o'clock. They'll have the game on the big screen live. It's free. Concession stands will be open. Go on down and support the Pacers. Great. We'll all support them. Here and there. We'll be back in a final word in just a moment. What is the Marion County Sheriff's Reserve Unit? In May, their security at the track. Race fans say these volunteer cops go out of their way to arrest them. Is it true? You're paying for their services. Wouldn't you like to know what you're getting in return? A different kind of cop. Tomorrow at 6 on WRTV 6 News. Let's talk smart. Let's talk Eagle Vision, V6, power windows and locks, air conditioning, automatic transmission, and more. Let's talk safety. Let's talk lease. We're talking $249 a month. Hey, stop talking and go test drive a new Vision ESI. It's the least we can do for you. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer today. Hello, my baby. Hello, my neighbor. Healthcare of Indiana, what healthcare is meant to be. Member the Principal Financial Group. Dave Thomas is always looking for interesting new ways to serve up a Wendy's hamburger. So you would add extra bacon. Yes. Bacon in every bite. Three full strips. Three. Make it four. Four. Let's make it five strips. Oh, six. six. Introducing Wendy's extra bacon cheeseburger. A quarter pound of fresh beef. Four full strips of bacon. Enough to satisfy almost everyone. Plus cheddar cheese and a zesty ranch sauce for a great new way to eat a bacon cheeseburger. Sixteen strips. Twenty. He's a bacon salesman. Thirty-six. Join Clyde and Dion, Oprah, Tim Allen, Jerry Van Dyke, and many more as they celebrate Howard Caldwell's 35 years at Channel 6. Wednesday at 7, only on WRTV6. That's our news for now. Thanks for watching us. Nightline is next. Good night.